Hello, my name is Diogo and I'm a master student at Instituto Superior Técnico. Today we will be talking about what is quantum computing and how we can use it to tackle problems in quantum chromodynamics. Quantum computing has generated a lot of buzz in recent years, with many well-known and established companies like Google, IBM, Intel and Microsoft, among many others, investing heavily into this field. Even governments are pledging significant funds for quantum research, with the US, the European Union and China investing on the order of billions of dollars over the next coming years. But where does all this hype come from? Well, it turns out that quantum computing possesses unique capabilities that classical computers simply cannot match. Classical computation consists of manipulating lists of bits, with a bit being the value 0 or 1. However, for quantum computing, the smallest unit of information is the qubit, a quantum analog of the bit. A qubit gets its unique properties from quantum mechanics. Unlike classical bits, a qubit can be 0, 1 or a superposition of both 0 and 1. The value of this qubit can then be manipulated using quantum gates, the analog of classical logic gates. However, this superposition is not present forever, since its value collapses into either 0 or 1 once we measure the qubit. If we have at least two qubits, we can also have entanglement, which is a form of superposition where the value of each qubit is dependent on the values of the other qubits. These two properties, superposition and entanglement, allow us to do very unique types of calculations at a speed which is not feasible with a classical computer. We only need to choose our quantum gates in such a way that the result we get from the measurement represents what we want. In the end, we are able to do calculations that have a significant speedup over their classical equivalents, which could allow us to solve problems that before were out of reach of even the fastest supercomputers. In fact, one area where quantum computing can prove useful is quantum chromodynamics. The matter that we see around us every day is mainly composed of atoms, with the nuclei surrounded by electrons. These nuclei are made of protons and neutrons, and these particles in turn are composed by quarks, which are fundamental particles that cannot be subdivided. Quarks interact via the strong force, which is carried by gluons. Quantum chromodynamics, abbreviated as QCD, is the study of systems composed by these types of particles, quarks and gluons, and how they form and interact. QCD is therefore crucial to understand how the universe works. Unfortunately, even the simplest QCD problems require powerful computer hardware to be simulated, which has limited progress in this area. Although current quantum computers have limited computational power and significant errors, it might be possible to take advantage of these early quantum processors by using hybrid algorithms, which partially use classical computation, but are robust to these errors and require few qubits. This type of algorithms can combine the best of both worlds, and has already been implemented extensively for quantum chemistry, where it has been used to determine how the atoms within the molecules bond. For my thesis, I will study how we can adapt this method to study physical systems in quantum chromodynamics, and check whether it imposes significant limitations. Hopefully, this new implementation will scale up whenever more qubits and better quantum hardware are used, allowing us in the coming decades to solve problems in QCD which were simply out of reach before with classical computers. This could then bring about a new era of scientific development for fundamental physics, so that we continue to study the inner workings of our universe. Thank you for watching.